All right, the first thing we need to talk about is probably the most important setting on your TIG welding machine. And this setting is post flow. Now, if we are TIG welding aluminum, it is extremely important that we post flow and shield the tungsten. If our glowing red hot tungsten has its gas supply cut short, severe oxide forms immediately gross. Look at that. When you have a contaminated tungsten like this, you go to start your next pass, Boom! All of this oxide is blown into your welding area immediately, and you have now introduced severe contamination into your next pass. Once again, your timer on the machine has to be set for a long enough duration to properly shield this electrode. Like I said, an extra second or two after your tungsten is finished glowing red hot. When done properly, we should always see this tungsten looking shiny. Sometimes you may see a little bit of color to it, that's all right. That is a light form of oxide that is formed. However, when it's a little bit of color, it's not a huge deal we can deal with that but ideally we want things to be super shiny like this here also with aluminum make sure to leave your torch completely stable while the post flow cycle is running if you can remember do not pull it away from the welding area when you do so this causes the gas to become insufficient as you pull it away and this poor little fella here is going to be contaminated by the air that we breathe so again, what do we not want? We do not want excessive balling. This can happen at higher amperage settings. Typically at this point, our balance is gonna have essentially too much positive side to the AC cycle. And like I said, we're welding at higher amperage, we're gonna see wobbling or fluttering or the tungsten will start to ball up on itself. And on the flip side of things, if we're running an improper balance setting again, this can cause our tungsten to form these weird shapes. These things are crazy. In some cases, they can completely run out of control and form all kinds of wild stuff like this. Again, like we talked about, this is gonna reduce accuracy and our overall heat input can be completely uneven, especially when we're working on lops sided joints or coped pipe joints or whatever. Having this one detail out of line is going to give you problems with that. Common mistake is somebody's going to hold the filler material in a comfortable position at the start and then once they begin to advance through their pass, their filler rod hand is going to start to creep towards the welding area. And remember, if you get set up for being comfortable at the beginning of your pass, you need to make sure that you're comfortable at the end of it as well. If you're welding along and all of a sudden you have your filler hand getting in the way or if you're fumbling around because you're not comfortable holding it, you're going to lose focus on what you should be paying attention to. And obviously if this happens, you're going to have a bad time. Every Everyone holds their grip on the filler material slightly differently to one another. I prefer to hold it like this. I find over time, this has the least amount of fatigue for my wrist, but most importantly, I can feed it comfortably like so. When I'm doing it like this, my hand is not gonna creep any closer to the weld area, and whatever grip you end up choosing, make sure you keep your hand in a stationary position, feed the filler material through your fingers, and you'll be able to maintain a good sight line so we can see clearly, so when you're welding, you won't have any curve balls to deal with. I've seen it before, check this out. Welding on this one looks pretty good, but take a look at the surrounding area that's been brushed. What if this was left unpainted as a raw aluminum piece? The surrounding area looks like an absolute train wreck, I hate it. But let's take our details with this little thing a step further. Now you see how I have another piece of plate positioned here. What I'm gonna do is use this top plate as a ruler to brush a clean and straight strip parallel to my welding path. I'm also gonna hold it on a bit of an angle like you're looking at here. This is also gonna help to brush the edge of the plate as well as the surface for the one beneath it. So essentially what I'm doing here is wire brushing two plates all at once. Then I remove the top plate that I was using as a ruler and look at how straight the brushed surface to this aluminum is now. The small details like this that most people don't even think about really set people apart as far as the quality of workmanship, not only with their welding, but with all the details of their work in general. 